This is a climbing sling and this is a climbing sling, but I can't take it off because my jacket's on. But this is an Alpine runner that I can, and this is from Blue Ice, and this is an Alpine runner from Black Diamond, and this is an Alpine runner from Mammut. This is 22 kilonewtons. And this is 22 kilonewtons. And we're curious why. When we test a rope eye to eye, we get one number, and when we test it in a loop, we get almost double. That was stronger. Almost double. And it broke where it was around a shackle and not in the knot. But what I'm curious is how this round sling could be rated for 22 kilonewtons, and this can be rated for 22 pulled eye to eye. But I'm also curious if you can make this stuff yourself at home, which we'll get into later. Let's look at the differences. So everything you see here is H and PE, and this is not that much more wide than the actual round sling, but you'll see here, this sling is rated for 22 kilonewtons and Edelred sling is 22 kilonewtons, but Black Diamond's Rabbit Runner is 22 kilonewtons and Mammut's Alpine Trad sling is 22 kilonewtons and Blue Ice's Alpine Runner is 22 kilonewtons. Now I find it interesting how different these bar tacks are. You can see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and a half, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and a half. They have thicker bar tacks than here, but there are less of them. However, this is way different because this is just a loop and a loop and a loop and a loop inside here and then they pinch it right there and we'll get more into that later so the bar tacks really aren't what make it different it's maybe the material itself this mammoth sling is 12 millimeters wide by 2.2 thick the black diamond one is even thicker and wider now this is around 8 to 10 millimeters and a little bit thicker at 3 point and 3.5 millimeters but there's only 5% more material in this. And if you're pulling this in a round configuration, it should be getting twice as much as that if it's about the same amount of HMPE threads in this stuff. So I don't know how we're getting the same number. Math is only so much fun, if only there was a way to find out. Well, that's more than 22. Wow. What? That's more than the round sling tests we've done. Yeah, that's very surprising. It is a similar amount of material though. But it's pulled straight. We need to clear something up. This is the same amount of material as this. This is the same amount of material as this. It, when you do different things with the same amount of material, you get different results except here. The Mammoth Sling was the smallest volume sling we're testing, the lightest. Black Diamond one is bigger. Is it stronger? That's the same as a sling. So we already tested a blue ice runner eye to eye and we got 25 kilonewtons and it broke a little bit weird because it has these white fibers going all the way around and around and around and it's not the stitching that holds it. The stitching's just creating this eye, but it is more than 22 kilonewtons. You're telling me that this pulled straight is more than we normally get on a round sling. So tell me, how strong is this? Double. How? <laughs> it's twice the material as this. This 120 centimeter sling has about the same volume as that. Okay. Um, if we doubled that up, it would have twice the strength of this sling. If we doubled this up, it would also have twice the strength of the original sling. I'm not convinced, but I am extremely curious how strong this is right here, except we're gonna replace this with a steel carabiner. That's not double. No. What the hell? <laughs> it's more, but it's not double. So my brain hurts more now, but there was a theory that I agree with sometimes until I think about it too hard. Is that a loop right there? Is that simulating it being doubled? But then if I do this, I don't understand how anything works. And what we have here is how an Alpine runner is supposed to be, I think, racked on your harness. So you don't want it this long. You can do Alpine quick draw configuration. That's a longer version than what you could get because these, these do come in multiple lengths. These ones do, yeah. But I have no idea how strong that is now. We asked the internet 
And they didn't know either. <laughs> what were the comments? Got anywhere from 10 pounds to 66 kilonewtons. 81 comments. 3x in theory, Scott Wall said. Somebody said super good enough. 55k in 33, 50, 63, 51.69. There were some people that, like me, thought that these steel carabiners might break first. They would have been the weakest link in that last test if we had them in the system. Yeah, and pulling the mammoth sling straight, a carabiner. Yeah, I would have broke the carabiner. So you gotta do your alpine missions with steelies now. Just like to point out, I was right that the carabiner <laughs> broke first. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, it wasn't the one I expected. It was this ANSI carabiner. Ah, I like this one. Why is that only 39? This is a 50 kilonewton carabiner. We've stressed it before, 40 kilonewtons probably what you'd expect. It broke at where it had a, uh, like a retaining pin here. Sling is uh, still intact. So the fibers are bunched a little bit weird, but I don't see any damage on the sheet. Now we're learning about another thing. That is the max force of the hydraulic without the two to one. So this is very exciting. This is the strongest pulley I've ever found. That is approximately this size. That has a working load limit of 60 kilonewtons, MBS. 300 and this as this strong right here because it's 10 millimeter sk99 max which is four times the amount of money for twice the strength and this is the time you'd kind of need that sort of thing this slot holds that side but then you take the whoopee sling and you tighten it up to get rid of all the slack before you start pulling the limited throw that you have science broke the right thing. Wow. It broke the sheath here and here and the core here. This specific piston in a two to one doesn't go up much higher than that. So who was right in the comments? Did anybody guess 70? I don't believe anybody guessed 70, but a number of people guessed three times the strength, which would be 66, which is super close to that. Let's test the black diamond one in that same configuration. It's so aggressive. 74 killing it. Wildly consistent. But now the pin is slightly bent. In this configuration, uh, nobody guessed as high as the result we got. And this was stronger than I was expecting. But then when you girth hitch something, or in this case, choke, they say you typically get about 50%. Actually, the blue ice manual says you get eight kilonewtons in that configuration. I don't trust or believe any numbers that I see or think now, so I think we should test this. Oh my God, that's that's more than it's rated for. How are we getting the same number, Gersich? <laughs> so we did a video about slings a while ago and those were doubled over where they're like, girth hitch choke reduces it by 50% and we didn't see that there either. I wish the numbers on our gear actually were what reflected reality. Let's do the other two slings. It's more than 22. Wow, it broke in the stitching. Why do I know less the more I do this? That broke in the stitching. To add even more questions to our life, we'll get into that soon. But we had some questions on these. We, from DN234, test the strength with a bolin. Beto Severin says it would be nice to test how strong the bolin master point is. Could you test it with a bolin on one end? Do they let you tie a bolin? They tell you how to tie a bolin and tell you how strong it is. I bet they're right. But what is a normal use case for tying a bolin? What I've seen is to create a lanyard to clip into an anchor or like a rappel extension. But... What does this say? This device cannot be used as a belay lanyard. So their lawyer wrote that. And then the product designer has a smiley face with a guy hanging on it as a personal lanyard. And then of course they don't want you to have slack in it, which is what the skull is for the guy next to it. That's what happens when multiple people write the same manual. So how do you tie a bowline? 25 years in and I still don't know. I'm gonna make this now so I can reference it later when I forget overhand. We're going to bring back one of these eyes to the edge. Make sure that's open. Pass the other one through it. We tighten this. 
make sure we're tightening the right side and then you have a bull one. In case one or two belay loops aren't enough, you kind of create this other belay loop, then it's a personal anchor. Ring loading, ring loading, ring loading. Is that what the comments sound like? Okay. In my head they do. <laughs> Let's find out if we get 12 kilonewtons just pulling it straight. Whoa, it's slipping at 10. I've never been more confused in an episode. Me neither, but that sure is the coolest graph we've ever seen. <laughs> what on earth? I would tie this in a bowl, but that is good to know. Before it starts slipping, this is how we tied it. Whoa. <laughs> it's stripping the black edge off. It was 10K in all the way up till that point. And then we got the 18. What? That is neat. Wow, can you see the difference between the two ropes? <laughs> it was unweaving this as it pulled it along. I think these black fibers are the things that go back and forth, holding the white fibers to look like this and not like this. Have we seen this result in a HMPE sling? Nope, nope, nope. Today is a new day. Seven, eight, Wow, this one slips lower. Oh, and breaks lower. That's really hot. If a rope looks like that, should you use it? It's really interesting that we can break three very similar products for the same thing, and they all break super differently. They all start breaking similarly. <laughs> if I'm the smiley guy on the instructions and I'm hanging here like this, what happens if I were to clip a repel device here and belay off of this or repel off of it, now I'm pulling the bolin apart. What happens when we ring load the bolins? It's slipping but climbing. Oh, wow. Wow, that's a bunched up sling. Oh, 12. What the hell? Started at 17, but it was around 12 that it continued to slip. Whoa. Four, three, four. So peak force of nine, but it was four to five is where it was slipping. Wow, that's hot. The standard for climbing harness belay loops specifies 15 kilonewtons. Uh, these got that, this one didn't. Now. If you were to buy 10 of these, that would cost you over $200. And these are nice. And it it is rated. And it is made out of HMPE. And so is this. The 12 braid HMPE that we carry now can be spliced into an eye to eye like this. And this, what I'm holding right now is $2.66 if you splice it yourself, which I'll show you how to DIY it so you don't D-I-E and then we'll run it through all the tests to see if it is stronger or at least super good enough. You can see that we break HMPE with HMPE. Now, if you want it to be this long, you can't just make your eyes this long because when you bury this inside of itself, it's going to shrink. So I do about 16 inches here of overlap and 16 inches over here. And you do that because the last inch of your taper does not count. And so that's where my loop is going to be. Now, I'm not going to take this tail and slip it down. I'm going to do something first. I'm going to take this other side and put it through here. So if I determine this is where I want it, I'm going to want to put it dead center. And you're going to want to check it. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six strands. And for redundancy, check it again. One, two, three, four, five, six strands. So you are dead center. Now you take this other side and put it through. And this is what is called a Brummel splice. So it doesn't come undone when you're not loading it. Make the eye the size that you want. It is going to, by the time you cinch it up, get a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to take this tail and I'm going to put it through there. So if that's where I want it, I'm going to push that apart. One, two, three, four, five. Woo! That needs to be in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Good. Just put that in your little splicing needle. Put a shit through, take it off. And now you have a brummel eye. You have the main body going through that way and then the tail going through that. And so you can't Pull it apart. It's still very important that you splice it down the body of this. So just below this part, you're going to go down the dead center of 
like that. You don't want to come out the side, so you gently push and stay in the middle. And then once you're in far enough, before that gets buried in there, you want to take the tail and you're going to stick it on the needle, which has the little hook there, and you push it so it doesn't come out. And you're going to push it down all the way until you can't do it anymore. And then you let it, the needle come out, pull it out, take that off, and you are going to milk it. You're going to grab the eye, you're going to do this, and it's going to suck up that inside of there until you no longer see the tail. Then you just repeat those steps on the other side. Ho oh, ho, it is almost the exact same length. That is actually pretty hard to do. <laughs> So our three samples got two results. The first one broke in the eye and these two broke in the taper and they were very consistent around 23 kilonewtons. That is a little bit less. Does that matter? It's not 72. And it looks like this one broke here where it went around that shackle. still has a few strands holding it, but it broke right there. When the material is round, the bolins look a lot cleaner than with flat webbing. Let's find out how strong the bolin is. Oh, it's sort of slipping. <laughs> okay, yep, yeah, it just broke. That's interesting, it didn't slip like the others. It just broke in the bolin. 12 kilonewtons is what they estimated on the manual of a blue ice runner. Let's see what happens when we ring load it. Oh, it slips. Wow, so cool. So I'm pretty happy with those numbers. I'm happy I can make one of these now. And there is an element of the fact that you're making these yourself. And you can have a 99.87% confidence that the minimum braking strength is going to be 22.55 kilonewtons 50% of the time because of the variable of you making them. <laughs> it's the same material and it's nine times cheaper. <laughs> Now, granted, people had to make it. I think it's kind of fun to make gear yourself and then wonder if it's going to work. Highliners have been doing it for years. Now, to make it a little bit more convenient for you, we got a large pallet of already made slings and soft shackles. Would you like to see that? We have gotten so much stuff recently that we had to get this new space next to our other shop here. And this is a 700 pound pallet of slings and soft shackles. So we just laid out everything from that pallet and I wanted to show you something really cool. I like long soft shackles and I like them big. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> What's cool about this soft shackle is it's a little bit bigger than the soft shackle on my shirt. So we put together a chart of all of the brake tests that we did. You can find that on any Alpine sling page on howdonto.com. And I don't care which one you buy because we carry them all, which I think is pretty cool. And if you order by 1 p.m., it's guaranteed to go out that day or your order is free. We try to be helpful and reliable and to have everything you need when you need it. The very next video that we're going to film is brake testing a little bit of this entire pile. And if you don't want to miss that, sign up for our newsletter at hownotto.com slash sign up. And if you want to see us break over 45 wrong slings, you can go check out that video now. This is hilarious to me that a girth hitch and a BFK are somehow the same average strength.